Hello, good morning. It's Tracy Daviero. Hold on here. I have both my earbuds in and I always tell my husband that I apologize for how loud I talk whenever I have both earbuds in. So um, how are you? Welcome to our Monday morning, Monday midday for me. It's 12 o'clock and um, our weekly session here on uh, getting started as a virtual assistant. So today I want to talk about mindset and I know that lots of times you know you're looking for tips about how to price your services or where to find clients and get started but a lot of that is really a lot of it comes around mindset and so um, although this sometimes you know people think it might be a little bit of a fluffy topic um, it's really not because everything that you do in your business has to come from the mindset of a business owner and so when you start thinking of things in terms of um, you know in terms of business as opposed to sort of what you're doing and the thing that you're doing at the time, you're going to make better decisions. And so I want to talk about a few different things today. Um, I'm going to hit on a couple of things that I say quite often. One of the first things is that when we are um, talking about sales in our business, um, when, when you think about getting clients, it is really about getting clients. It's finding people to work with you, right? Finding people that want to work with you and finding people that you want to work with. There's actually number one mindset thing is that you don't have to work with everybody. You can actually choose who is a good client for you and who isn't because you don't have to say yes to anybody who decides that, um, you know, they, they ask you if you want to, to be the VA. Um, but around sales, if that's a really challenging thing for you, if, if the word sales and selling yourself and the whole concept is, is sometimes overwhelming. I know a lot of us are, are introverts, we're, we're support professionals. It's, it's our nature to you know, not be salesy and that type of thing. If we were sales type people, we would have gotten all of our experience in the corporate world in different, probably in different positions. Now, that's not to say everybody's like that, but certainly it's it's a stressful thing whenever you think about sell, selling yourself and selling your services and, and finding clients is not, it's not as fluffy as that. It's not as fluffy as just finding clients. It's about getting out there, selling people and asking them for money to do work for them. And that can be a real challenge for people. And so one of the things around mindset um, that you can adopt is thinking about it in terms of exactly what we do it's it's being supportive it's being helpful and so some people will say you know i've heard some business coaches say you know selling is really just helping and so when you think of it when you sort of reframe that and you think okay it really is like you are doing something in their business that is not less than what they're doing you know you're both up here it's your contractor working your business to business you're working with another business owner you're not there you are you're working the support role but you're not their employee you're not their staff you're not anything you are an equal business owner providing a service that they really need and so it's really important to it's it's actually a service that they are not themselves good at right if somebody is going to be an accountant or a business coach or a travel um, blogger you know whatever there's all kinds of people that that support VAs these days or that that work with VAs and if that if whatever they are doing whatever their business is that's their area of specialty not the admin not the other things that that we all do so well and so you have to remember that when you're putting yourself in um, you know in the frame of mind to get clients and find clients and network with clients, you're on an equal footing. You're definitely on an equal footing. You're providing a specialized um, level of service or, or package of services that you provide for your clients and they are doing the same thing for their clients but you need them and so that's why you're there. It's really, really important. So sales equals help, there's no question. Um, but it's not it's not lesser than what the other business owners out there are doing and you know, that's to say if you're working for a million dollar business owner, yes, okay, maybe your revenues aren't where they are, but you're still both business owners and you're still doing the same thing. So that's really important. Um, so the second thing that I wanted to talk about is about taking action. One of the things that we do, um, and when you are really trying to get into a business mindset and run your business with that in mind, is you can take training, you can take, um, you know, you can learn things, you can do research about all the different things that we need to learn about in in our business. Um, but the the most important piece of it to act like that business owner, like you know, put that CEO hat on that I always talk about, um, is to make a decision and take action. So. Asking people for advice is not a bad thing. Um, in fact, it's a pretty good thing. You know, sometimes we think that because we are working on our own, 
we don't have to, you know, we're not allowed to ask anybody. We shouldn't be reaching out to other people for advice or information and that kind of thing. We just need to do it ourselves and we need to find the answer. And, and for some things that may be true, but for most things, you should always be looking to somebody who's, you know, further ahead in the process than you are. And, and not colleagues who maybe if you're starting out and there's another colleague who's starting out, I see it in the VA forums all the time that, you know, people are asking others who don't have the answers yet for what, you know, for the answers or what are you doing? And I'd love to learn about this and I'd love to learn about this. And so what I would say, and if you're going to act more like a business owner, then um, not, I'll say, because what is the alternative, right? Um, is to is to seek out, you know, your advice and that type of thing from people who are further along than you. Um, that could be, you know, a mentor if you're lucky enough to have someone like that. It can be, um, it can be a, a VA who's who is open with five clients where, you know, you're um, um, somebody who doesn't have any clients yet, or, or maybe it's somebody who's running a VA team already that, you know, you're just, you have your, your own five clients and you're deciding whether you want to bring on subs, whatever the answers are to the questions that you're looking for. And particularly when you're getting started, I know there's a lot of things to learn. Um, you don't want to be seeking advice from people who haven't done what you've done yet. So that's really important. So that's the first piece of it. And then the second piece is just make a decision and take the action on whatever it is. So you can't, you can get lost. I mean, everybody gets lost in, in social media online, but everybody gets lost in, in always being online and looking for things. So if you start a research project on, you know, I, whatever services you can offer or how to package things or whatever it is that, that you are stuck on in your business, um, you have to get to the point where you take the information you have and you process it and then you make a decision. And that's what business owners do is they say, okay, here's the thing. Now I'm going to move on and I'm going to do this because what you recognize is that you can always change that decision down the road if it doesn't serve you or if it's not really working the way you want it to. It's about moving forward all the time. That's really, really important. So making decisions and taking action two very, very important parts of the business owner mindset as well. Um, the other thing, and this is my number three, I'm not doing not too bad, is um, be resilient. One of the things that is uh, very challenging and, and it's not always because of the roles that we've, you know, that we've put ourselves in and that kind of thing, but, but a lot of times, you know, we feel responsible to our people that we work with. I was just talking with a client the other night, the other day, and um, she, she was, you know, stressed that the, the business owner that she works with had so many things going on and they were falling onto her plate and they were, they were, she was experienced what we call scope creep. So she was supposed to be doing these things. She ended up, you know, everything he threw her way. She's like, okay, I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. And I said to her, well, why are you doing things that are not inside your scope? Like these are the things that you agreed to do for him for this amount of money. And she said, well, there's nobody else in the office to do it. I'm like, that's not your problem. That's his problem. He doesn't have enough staff. And so when we started talking through the problem like that, it made a whole lot more sense to her that, you know, you're right, that, that it isn't really my responsibility. And I said to her, you're not responsible for his, you're responsible for the work that you agreed to do at the rate that you agreed to do it, but you're not responsible to keep his business afloat at whatever cost simply because he doesn't have anybody in place or he doesn't have, um, you know, the, the money to pay somebody extra to do um, whatever it is. So, so it's really important to be resilient in business and stand up for the decisions that you've already made. If you have a proposal or a contract or whatever it is, or a rate set or a certain number of hours or an expectant uh, expectancy of, of, you know, availability or response times or anything like that, you need to make sure that you're holding yourself to those and you're holding your clients to it as well. Being resilient just means that, um, you know, you are, you are tough. You have to get mentally tough and say, okay, that's not really in my area. And it's a very hard thing to do for a couple of reasons, we know. Number one is because we're always trying to please people. We always wanna make sure that we are going above and beyond and doing, you know, a great business so that they refer us to other people for sure. Um, but the other reason is that you get really jaded and you, you, um, you know, that you think that, that you have to do whatever that they say because they're the ones paying you. And that's really not the case at all. It's actually, there's nothing further from the truth. So it's, it's more professional to say, that's not my area. Let's find somebody else who can do that for you. Um, or, you know, just simply say, no, that's not, that's not the thing that I need to do. So, so being able to do that is really important for your mental sort of stability as a business owner. You can get really overwhelmed and you can actually start to not like the clients that you're working with. And when you start off doing the things that you're supposed to do, 
in the time that you're supposed to do them for the people that you want, you, that's what your business is supposed to be, be about. And so you can say then, I need to go and find other clients so that I can do this, you know, this, these tasks for as well, because that's what I like to do and that's what I'm most professional at. And, and so it's really important to develop that um, clarity around what you do and who's in charge of what it is that you do. Okay, that's really important too. And then the last piece is, and that kind of goes with the resiliency, is that, you know, when something does happen in business, whether you, you know, whether somebody's piling work on you, whether somebody's breaking your boundaries, whether somebody's, um, and you know, usually it's newsflash, right? You're the one who's breaking the boundaries if you're letting somebody text you after hours or if you're making them, you know, if you're doing rush jobs for them and, and you're complaining about doing last minute tasks for people, but you're still doing the work and you're still getting it done for them. You're teaching them that that's okay. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting behind your computer and you're huffing and puffing or complaining to your fellow VAs that, you know, you have a crappy client. It's important to recognize that, that, you know, you have to set the boundaries and you have to hold the boundaries. And so that's the way you do that is to recognize that you're their equal. You're not somebody who's, you know, you're not a schmuck. You're not somebody who's, who's um, working for them, you're working with them. They're, you know, they're, they're employing you, yes, they're paying you, but it's not that kind of a role. They're not in charge of you at all. And so the advice that I give around this is it's not personal, it's business. Everything is um, not, if, if a client says, well, you know, you take a lot of days off, or well, I never know when you're in the office, I never know this, I never know that. That's, those are things that sort of, you know, they, they come across as hurtful. And so those are the things that I see posted in the forums that, you know, my client is complaining about this, my client is complaining about that. And they bring all the personal into it. And the advice around that is it's not personal, it's business. Everything is business. So when you lay the clear boundaries, when you decide what those things are, and you lay those clear boundaries, the clear rules about, you know, what your response times response times are what you know what your communication methods are what like for me it was always email scheduled phone call and emails and that's it you didn't text me you didn't instant message me you didn't Skype me nothing I won't respond that way because these are the mes methods of communication that I work with because you're not my only client right I have a lot of clients and this is the way I run my business again it's not about personal it's not how are you feeling that you're not available for them um, you don't have to be available to anybody 24 7 and unless that's in your contract somehow which which I you know, highly doubt it is. So, so think of it from the, the concept of it's not personal, it's business. Everything that happens in the communication between you and your client is a business transaction. It is business communication. It's not about them being disappointed in you. Like what a horrible feeling, right? I've, I've had that before. I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of clients over the years and, and it, but it's not about that. It's, they're, they're not, you develop a personal relationship with some of them. Yes, you do, not everybody. But when you do that, then, you know, things feel like it's a personal attack on you. And it's very simple. It's like, these are the tasks, this is the money, um, and these are, and it, and it is kind of generic like that. Like there are, you know, the four things or whatever that the, the, how much, what I'll do, how much I'll do it for, when I'm going to do it, and how much lead time and information I need from you to get those things done. And those are really the four things that you need to focus on. Um, and then cut out all the other stuff around it. You know, the, you can keep your business communication short and sweet. These are the, use the four, you know, the four things. This is what I need. This is when I need it. And this is what it's going to cost. And, and you'll just find that you'll be able to make better decisions and you'll be thinking more like a business owner. So I hope that was um, some helpful tips for you today. I went a little out of order on my notes. So I'm hoping that my little recap here will, will make sense. I always try to do them right away in case I missed something. So um, we'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much. Take care.